I greet you all in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We are going to talk about men of courage. Uh, the character, our main character, who is Ahab, the king of Israel. His behavior was uh, not all that good before God. When we read from the uh, first Kings chapter 21, verse 25, I read in your hearing, no one else so completely sold himself to what was evil in the Lord's sight as did Ahab, for his wife Jezebel influenced him. We are realizing that uh, uh, in Israel, the men of God were supposed to be a straightforward man. But Ahab as a king, the Bible is telling us that he sold himself to evil in the sight of God. And God was not happy about what he did because he was to stand on behalf of God and stand and portray a character that was God and so that he was also supposed to lead Israelites towards God and he worshiped God, the only creator God, but he failed to do that. What was the reason that caused him not to follow such teachings? We see First Kings chapter 16, verses from 29 and onwards. I read in your hearing again. Ahab, the son of Umri, began to rule over Israel in the 38th year of King Asa, Asa's reign in Judah. He reigned in Samaria 22 years, but Ahab did what was evil in the sight of the Lord, even more than any of the kings before him. And as though it were not enough to live like Jeroboam, he married Jezebel, the daughter of King Ethbal of Sidonia, and he began to worship Baal. I realized that uh, the mistake number one that he did, he married a lady which had a different religion. I want to address this one to young men. When you are preparing for your marriage, marry someone with the same religion that you believe in. Someone who worships the same God as you worship. Look at Ahab. The Bible is telling us straightforward that he started to worship Baal because of his wife Jezebel. When we, as we continue to read the 16th chapter of 1st Kings, uh, it tells us that everything that he was doing, it was a decision from uh, Jezebel. Instead of being the uh, head of the family, Ahab was relying from the information from his wife, and he started worshiping Baal. You see, when you, uh, when you worship Baal, you are against God. God, the first commandment, tells the children of Israel that he is the God, the creator God. There is no other God before him. But Ahab did not listen to this instruction. He took to himself that he can do whatever he thinks to do, but it was bad before God. Because the Bible explains that he did what was evil before God. Message number two to young men. When you are getting married, know exactly the religion of your wife so that we, you walk together. My Bible also tells me that the man is the head of the wife. Some people have also said that the man is the, uh, is the head of the family. Yes, but the Bible says the man is the head of the wife. And I've seen at times uh, women are at loggerheads with their husbands. The reason is that ladies will be trying to push the head back to its position because ladies, the men will be, have drifted away from their position. And when the lady is trying to push back the head, it means that uh, he's trying to make things work according to God's will. Uh, when you check again in the beginning, when God created man, we gave him Eve. Adam uh, decided to take instructions from his wife uh, instead of taking instruction from God because God has instructed them not to eat the fruit in the center of the garden. But when Eve came with the fruit that was forbidden to eat, he ate it. And in other words, when you are a breadwinner, don't let your wife bring food on the table. She will bring whatever she brings because 
uh, it is not the will of God to happen in that way in the family. In this case, Jezebel was the one ruling, not Aham. So in, in other words, we can simply say Jezebel was standing in the foot of the uh, king, and yet she was not the king because uh, Ahab had relegated his duty to Jezebel. And when you read some other commentaries, they tell us that Ahab was looking forward to have this vineyard. The way how he was going to get this vineyard did not worry him, but what he wanted, he wanted to get his, this vineyard, come what may, come thunder, come sunshine, he wanted the vineyard because he was desperately in need of it. As people, what do we do? When you check our neighbors as men, men of courage, when you see your neighbor's property, do you think it belongs to you? The 10th commandment forbids covetousness. All men should work and harvest from their fields, and they should uh, 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 harvest from what they have worked for. Because if you try to harvest from what you did not, not sow, God forbids that. And as men of God, we need to check our neighbors should be our friends. Our neighbors should be part of our families in such a way that we respect their families, we respect their properties. But in this case, they did not respect the properties of their neighbors because they were so covetous. And then after that, when... Uh, when you continue to read Ahab uh, uh, to go ahead with the instruction from uh, um, Jezebel. And Naboth was killed because of his vineyard. I realize that most of us, we are leaders. Most of us, some of us are also pastors. When you get into the church boards, when you read the story of Nab Naboth and Jezebel, how this land was taken over by Ahab, Jezebel had to write a letter, uh, put a signature instead of Ahab putting the signature. It was now written by Jezebel himself and it sent to the uh, villagers and they concluded that they are going to uh, create a story uh, about uh, Naboth. The story was to uh, blame him in such a way that he has blasphemed and blamed the king, and Naboth was to be killed. And with the signature of the king, that was the death stamp that we can say today's well. And um, the people sat down when they were feasting. Uh, the story tells us that Naboth was elevated, and when he was, ele he was elevated, the story goes on to tell us that uh, he was accused, false accusation. And the conclusion was that she, he must be stoned to death. In our deliberation as pastors, as elders, as church members, how many people have we pulled down in such a way that we gain everything that they belong to, what, they, what belongs to them? I realized that uh, it was a mischievous behavior which was portrayed by Jezebel, and Ahab did not say no to such kind of a behavior. Because he was a king, he was supposed to stop that kind of behavior. I realize that uh, the whole Israel belonged to, to Ahab. I want to believe there were so many lands that did not belong to anyone. If he wanted any land that was not belonging to anyone, he could have taken it and no one could blame him. But he took over the land of uh, uh, Naboth. After taking over the land of uh, Naboth, the prophet Elijah came when he was sent by God. He visited Naboth when he was walking around this uh, piece of land which he took from uh, Naboth. The uh, servant of God told him that what you have done, you have cursed yourself, you are going to die, you and your family are going to die, and you are going to be eaten by the dogs. And it came to pass, it happened as what uh, Elijah has said, because he did not do according to God's will. We need to be very careful when you are make, making decisions. And the head of the family is the man, not ladies. And when we make decisions according to our wives, we are shortchanging ourselves because God said a man should lead. And when you go further again, chapter 21, we realize that uh, another man who was uh, 
uh, very courageous is Obadiah. And uh, there was a drought in Israel. When there was a drought in Israel, there was no rain. It was because of the sins of uh, Ahab. And God came uh, to rebuke Ahab because of his sinfulness. Now, uh, this story tells us that uh, when uh, uh, Obadiah and he is a king, they moved to the field checking whether they could get grass for their animals. And they changed, uh, they, 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 they moved along the field. The other one on the other side, uh, Jezebel, um, Ahab on the other side. And when they were moving, uh, Obadiah met uh, Elijah, the prophet. The discussion was that, go tell your master that I want to meet him. And Obadiah was afraid that peradventure when Elijah has spoken this word, because he, were, he had the power of God, it might disappear. And when, uh, when uh, the king Ahab comes, he might not find him. He explains that there was a time when Jezebel wanted to kill the prophets of God. Obadiah had, to carry, had the courage to hide a hundred prophets of God in two caves, 50 in one cave and 50 on the other cave. Uh, it shows that uh, Obadiah was a man of courage. When he was uh, doing this, I wonder how could he manage to do such kind of a thing, to feed 100 people without anyone from Jezebel's house noticing that there's something fishy which was done by Obadiah. Obadiah was a man of God. He was so courageous. He did all these things despite the fear of being killed. He continued to do that, and he was successful. How many times have we let go God's work because of, of being afraid? We need to be courageous, execute God's work despite the circumstances, despite the situations, and work very hard without fear because we are men of courage. When you are drawing closer to the conclusion, we go to Romans chapter uh, 7. Uh, we realize that certain things that happen in our life, we need not to be afraid. We need to know what to do in most cases. I read here uh, chapter 7, um, verses uh, 21. It seems to be a fact of life that when I want to do what is right, I inevitably do what is wrong. Maybe when we check the behavior of Ahab, deep in his heart, he wanted to do what was right. But because we are born in sin, he could not do what was right. His Paul here is telling us that he wanted to do what was right, but failed to do what was right because of sin which was in him. Verse 22, I love God's law with all my heart, but there is an... There is an infight and makes me a slave to the sin that is still within me. Oh, what a miserable person I am. Who will free me from this life that is dominated by sin? Verse 25. This one is so wonderful. That Thank God the answer, answer in, is in Jesus Christ our Lord. So you see how it is. In many minds, I rely, I really want to obey God's law but because of my sinful nature, I am slave to a sin. Paul's uh, address here is telling us that we may wish to do what is good and fail to do it because of sin which is in us. But alas, God is with us. God is within us. We should thank God because of Jesus Christ. When we realize that we can't do what we want to do which is good, thank God we go to Jesus Christ and pray, he will give us courage. He will give us power to conquer sin because he died for us on the cross that we may have courage, that we may have power to conquer sin. In this, I thank God that we have got Jesus Christ. May, may, God, may God bless the reading of his word. Amen.